Let us start with the definition of graph. A graph is a collection of objects, for, for example, in the case of something like Instagram, objects being Instagram users. And each one of these objects or users will give us a node. And then there are interactions between these nodes. So roughly speaking, graph is a collection of nodes and edges that have to do with the objects and the relationships between the objects. This picture from the book is one of the old instances in which a graph was useful in making inferences. Now this is the Zachary uh, Karate Club network, which represents the friendship, which is a relationship between two objects, and objects are basically members of this Karate Club. And this was gathered from 1970 to 1972, and each one of the edges uh, indicate whether or not two individuals that are basically members of this group have socialized outside of the club or not. This study indicated that club kind of is a split into two factions and then basically node 0 and node 33 are centers of these uh, sections and Zachary was able to correctly predict wh which node uh, basically which one of the nodes would fall into which one of the factions based on the structure that this graph provides. Another example would be something in the biological domains where nodes could be proteins and the edges would be basically the different types of relationships between the proteins. Now the main novelty of using graphs in uh, machine learning is basically the fact that uh, even though analyzing each one of these individual uh, observations of entities is important, uh, graphs provide us with some sort of a structure. It provides information on the relationship with, uh, relationships between the nodes, and that relationship can be used in order to facilitate better uh, inference making by incorporating these relationships and this structure and maintaining, in, in some ways, some types of regularizations or uh, information sharing and message passing and these sorts of approaches that are only possible via knowing these relationships between the nodes. Now let's get mathematical a bit. A graph G is defined by a set of nodes and a set of edges. For each two nodes, such as U or V, a edge is basically a tuple, an ordered tuple UV, uh, which indicates that if you consider the node associated with U and the node associated with, with V, there is this directed graph that goes from U to V. In many cases, the graphs that we are considering is a simple graph, meaning that if there is a relationship from U to V, or in other words, if U and V is a member of edges, then you could assume that V and U is also a member of edges. It is a structure that really helps in capturing these relationships, uh, even though there are redundancies in it, is adjacency matrix, or A, which basically is a member of R cardinality of V times cardinality of V. And the value of the cardinal, uh, adjacency matrix at indices uh, basically row associated with node u and column associated with node v is 1 if u and v is a member of the set of edges and 0 otherwise. Now it is obvious that if the graph that we are considering is simple, this means that the adjacency matrix is symmetric. Otherwise there is no constraint about this being symmetric, but if it, if it is symmetric it means that it's a simple graph. Uh, so this is this example is a binary uh, adjacency matrix, but there are instances in which there is a weight between these, such as, for example, the similarity of two nodes in a sort of a structure. For example, uh, the strength of a protein-protein interaction could basically be interpreted as the weight of the connection between the two instances. Now, we talked about the fact that graphs basically provide us with information on the relationships between the edges. Uh, but the next step in generalizing this uh, abstraction is to talk about the multi-relational graphs. So you can see the term multi, you can see the term relational, and graphs. So extending the edge notation is basically what you can see in multi-relational graphs, meaning that while you had previously edges, 
that they were associated with relationships, you basically extend this notation and you, know, you have different types of relationships. In order to bring this in the notation that we previously had, we will have this set of edges, but this time each element of this set of edge is going to be essentially two nodes and the edge is going to basically indicate a relationship, but you also have an additional indicator, which is the type of the relationship. So this are going, these are going to be the new members of the set of edges. This means that in order to kind of represent them, you can have one adjacency matrix per type for each one of the type values. So you can have basically an adjacency tensor, which is a member of obviously the cardinality of set of nodes times set of relationships times set of nodes. Well, the first important example of the multi-relational uh, graphs is heterogeneous graphs. This basically refers to the graphs that in that graph, nodes are also associated with types in some sense. This means that if you take the full set of nodes, there is a partition such as this, such that each one of these two different subsets are disjoint, meaning for each i that is not equal to j. And the way, as we mentioned, nodes are somehow associated with the relationships uh, is going to manifest itself like this. When you have a edge such as u tau i v being a member of the set of edges, meaning that if this is an edge of a graph, this means that u is a member of vj and v is a member of vk. Now what this here is is an example. This means that in some way the partition to which the node belongs kind of has something to do with the relationship, meaning that the relationships of this type are between the nodes from vj that and, and uh, the nodes uh, on the other end in vk. Please note that this is an example. Consider this example in which certain nodes are associated with proteins, certain nodes are associated with drugs, and certain nodes are associated with diseases. There are different types of relationships defined in this graph structure. You could think of these as those partitions that we discussed, such that in this graph of ours, the set of nodes is de defined like this. And now, let's say we have a type of relationship called treatments. If you think about it from a conceptual standpoint, this means that these edges are basically interactions between drugs and diseases. Now, if you consider something more um, complicated than just the concept of treatment, you can cons uh, consider the concept of polypharmacy side effects that is basically defined between uh, two drugs. So this is defined basically within V2. A more aggressive example of the heterogeneous graphs are multipartite graphs. This definition means that if you have this edge defined uh, basically in the set of edges, meaning that if then you have U tau I and V being a member of the set of edges, you can conclude that if basically okay let me write it to, like, write this down and kind of talk about this interpretation this means that you have a partition within the set of nodes that you have in your set of nodes and the only types of relationships the only types of edges that are allowed are edges from one node in one group to another node in another group so if you have this edge defined in your set of edges based on the definition of multipartite graphs you can know you can be absolutely sure that u and v belong to two different partitions of the sets of nodes another example of multi-relational graphs is multiplex graphs To understand this better, this has something to do with layers. So you basically want to have k layers defined in your graph structure. Now here, each node is associated with a layer. 
and each layer is associated with a unique relationship. Now this is important to understand. Now there are interlayer edges that basically connect the same nodes across different layers. And there are intralayer edges that would uh, basically work within a layer. To understand this better, let's go through an example. If you consider a multiplex transportation network, you can consider each node associated with a city. So let's say we have multiple layers. And this is layer 1 all the way to layer k. In this model, each one of these layers is associated with a method of transportation. For example, air travel versus train travel uh, or traveling with car and things as such. Now you can see that perhaps intralayer uh, edges have something to do with how city 1 or whether or not city 1 is connected to city 2 uh, using the kth method of transportation. And these are basically intralayer edges while interlayer uh, edges basically have something to do with uh, your ability to switch the type of transportation from uh, one method of transportation to another within the same city. So this, as you can see, is an example of a multiplex graphs. And these examples, like multiplex graphs, heterogeneous graphs, these are very um, uh, conceptually close. Now the next step is basically utilizing this graph structure is also looking at the individual level nodes. So one of the things that is kind of pretty important is to talk about the feature information uh, per node. So when we want to represent the node level attributes, what we have is basically we have a matrix like this, which is a member of R, V times M. This is just, this means times, it's not an X. And what this basically assumes is that the order in which these nodes are appearing basically in the rows of this matrix is the same as uh, the order by which they appear in the adjacency matrix associated with the same graph. The reasoning behind that it becomes more obvious as we go through the kind of definitions of graph neural networks and layers as such, um, but this is just an assumption that we can consider and it, pretty, it is pretty intuitively uh, clear. When we're talking about heterogeneous graphs, we generally assume that each different type of node has its own distinct type of attributes. In understanding these different types of things that we can do with graphs, it is also possible uh, that in some cases we have real values, uh, real valued edge features in addition to discrete edge features as we discussed before. And it is possible to basically associate uh, real value features with the entire graph and so on. Now, as we continue in the book, there is this di distinction between the terms graph and the term network. And the book decides that in, in cases where we're talking about some sort of a practical application, the term network is more relevant than graph. And in other things, when we're talking about abstraction or conceptualization, we're talking about a graph. For so these terms are basically uh, kind of has been used interchangeably in, in the literature. Yet this work tries to kind of shed more light as to why and how they should be uh, used, uh, used in different circumstances. Now let's talk about the types of problems that we are dealing with when utilizing graphs for inference. The first example is the famous example of node classification uh, family of problems. For example, detecting uh, certain nodes in a social media network or in a social media graph in which each node is associated with a user and the problem could be something like detecting whether or not a user is a spammer or a bot. And in this case, the problem basically is classified under the category of node classification. Thinking about this, as we have attributes associated with every node in a graph, one could see that it might be kind of pretty similar to the problem of supervised classification in traditional machine learning. Yet, one thing that is important is that these nodes and their attributes are not independent and identically distributed. One thing that has been very used in, for example, graph neural networks or in other approaches that are using graphs as a helpful structure is trying to exploit homophily, meaning that you allow sharing of information through these channels or basically edges between the 
nearest between the neighboring nodes. Then there is the concept of a structural a structural equivalence, which means that if you consider two nodes and they have similar local neighborhoods in terms of their structures of these local neighborhoods, it's kind of uh, more probable that they share the same label. When we were talking about homophily, there's also heterophily, meaning that uh, in certain networks, it might be the case that um, the, the nodes that are basically neighbors tend to have uh, different labels. For example, um, in uh, analyzing social media and considering gender, it's, higher, it's more likely that uh, the two nodes indicating two people and the edge between them that indicates some sort of follow, following followee relationship um, is basically there and those nodes have different genders. Now let's say you're considering a graph for uh, training purposes. You have a small set of edges that are labeled that you're basically using them in order to train the network. There are certain, uh, let's say, validation and test nodes. Now the point here is that in contrast to the usual supervised learning in the machine learning domain, you have this overall global structure that you could also be using and it could also have something to do with the information coming from the test um, domain in this case. You will not use the test labels in order to make the model better, but for example, the fact that this node is in the vicinity of several test nodes and thus forms a structure or things like that can help in basically assigning uh, label to the unlabeled uh, set of points in the training set. The other problem that is usually discussed is the problem of relation prediction, otherwise known as other names such as link prediction, graph completion, and relational inference. And this naming basically has to do with the domain in which uh, the applications of these kinds of theoretical approaches are being used. One example is that if you have a content and if you have a user in social media defining these relationships as to, for example, considering in a recommender system what video to uh, recommend to someone or what product to recommend to someone is something that has to do with the applications of uh, solutions to the problems in this domain. Now the standard setup for this problem is that you have a set of edges um, and some of these edges are given to you for training, which is a subset of this. And the idea is to infer the missing edges or the other relationships that were not included in the original set of relationships used for training. The problems in this domain also do not really easily fit into the traditional categories of machine learning problems such as supervised and unsupervised because in some sense they are both supervised and unsupervised. And some of the uh, prior assumptions and uh, evaluation techniques and things as such are kind of uh, unique to the graph domain. The next problem is clustering and community detection. The other problem worth discussing is the problem of clustering and community detection. While the previously mentioned problems such as node classification and relationship classification basically fall into somehow something similar, uh, even though uh, different in different aspects, to the traditional problem categories in machine learning, such as supervised or unsupervised clustering, like if we consider this relationship between these two older problems that uh, these two problems that we just mentioned and these community detection problem has some similarities with the problem of unsupervised clustering in this problem basically we are interested in kind of discovering and inferring uh, latent community structures for example you could consider uh, if we had information on everything that is basically published in google scholar uh, you would have nodes associated with authors, you could have uh, relationships indicating something like co-authorship, and you could consider this vast uh, crystal, this, this graph, considering of millions and millions of nodes, and you could assume uh, that it is, you could basically uh, easily understand that it is trivial to assume that there are going to be subclusters and clusters within these structure based on research area, based on the publications and things as such. And this structure and these clusters basically impact the probability of two authors being, um, being in the same paper together. The other groups of problems are graph classification, regression, and clustering. These are approaches that mainly are defined over entire graphs 
For example, you might have a graph that is basically associated with the structure of a molecule, and you want to utilize the information within that graph to understand whether or not this molecule is uh, toxic or not. In these problems, a train set uh, consists of examples in which each example is a complete graph and you could basically, the objective is to understand how to deal with these independent graphs. Now with this notion of observation of entities, this is going to be the closest thing in some sense in the, in the domain of graph analytics that uh, we can come to uh, traditional approaches such as supervised and unsupervised learning. Except that it, instead of an image or like a piece of text, here you will have graphs as your examples.